Nice. So this was uh, last time's uh, last position, right? You remember Pachier Castle short uh, in this position. And anyone, do you remember White's move here? What did White play here? Very smart move. I'll just quiz you for the next two moves here very, very quickly, just to see if you remember our topic. Uh, okay, I see. Fine. Everybody remembers like Patriots, Daniel Best, Jay Vinamra. Aha, interesting move, MM Thinker. You can probably play like that. Yugoslavia and Berserker also added chess. And Wacky Hill. Yeah, but they actually played in the other way, the way that Patriots is saying. Aha. That's right. And they certainly didn't play H4 here. Exactly. Uh, they didn't play H4 for obvious reasons. If H4, uh, this was not would not make sense, like we were saying. Uh, that was the conclusion from last time's class, right? And we have securely blocked the king side. Maybe Vasier thought about this when he castled short, but he forgot about the move that Patriots was saying. So please go ahead, Patriot. What do you play here? Key move, of course, g4, because in such positions with opposite castle kings, uh, activities, everything, we don't care about giving away the pawns. Uh, the speed with which we attack will be decisive, usually. So here after knight takes g4, h4. Now there is no way really black can avoid the opening of files on the king side. And that's what happened in the game. Aha, that's exactly what happened in the game. And uh, black, even being one of the best players in the world, was not able to save this uh, position. So, yeah, that's uh, that's important. That's an important takeaway. Try not to castle into it, like we were saying. So, um, welcome again, everyone. And uh, we will have a look at some more examples about one player castling into it, so to speak. Castling at the wrong moment, exposing their king, just like we saw in this example. Castling was not a good idea because white was able to open up the position. So I prepared some different uh, structures that I wanted to show you. And I thought about starting with this game. It's a game played this year in the tournament in, I think it's a tournament in Sharjah, which was played recently. Let's see if I can bring this example up. I thought it was, was rather curious, this example. Let's see here. Um, the white player is not so famous, I think, uh, Al Hosani, but the black player is well known, Indian Grandmaster Raunak Sadwani. So here, as you can see, white has played some, it's easy to see some kind of Nimsu Indian with, with A3. Now we can see that because the black Dark Squad Bishop is not around anymore. It, it traded itself on C3. And uh, as you can see, black is already safely castled, while white has to take some decision here, decision about what to do with their king. So this is not an easy position at all. It's a tricky position and white went completely wrong in this position. So I would like to see if you can find the best way for white to cope with this situation uh, with focus on your king, of course. So uh, it's a difficult position. Black is better no matter what we play with white, but we're looking for the least of evil. Okay, Patriots, I will uh, revoke the pawn very soon. So please uh, try to make a choice here try to find the, the list of evils uh, for white in this complex position, in this inferior position. But there is always a best move, no? No matter how bad is our position, there is always a best move. So that's what I would like to see if you can find the best uh, move here. All right, I think that's enough. So uh, please go for it, guys. Let's see if you can find the best way out of it, so to speak, here in this, in this position. All right, so white's, white's least evil. What would that be? Yeah, interesting move, Eric. I looked at that also, but uh, there is a problem with that. Okay, we I think we have somebody uh, who got it almost right. How did that happen? Wow. Something curious happened here. Yeah, we will talk about that very soon. Uh, okay, some people don't want to castle. Yeah, that's also possible, of course. Yeah, I can give you half a point for that. It's better than what they played in the game, that's for sure. So, let's see if somebody finds the hole. Uh, okay, so Wacky Hill, you were extremely close. Amazon also. Great work. Yeah, you can consider yourself basically winners here because this is much better than what happened in the game. Torichess also. 
You were very close. You were, you were very close. Um, and Carlos, uh, you were also on the right track. Aha. Yeah, I would think about your solution as one of the most obvious ones. But I think there is a slight problem with this. Okay, so nobody got it completely right, but many of you were very close on this one. That's great news. So let's uh, let's listen to Wacky Hill, who was fastest here with the right solution. So Wacky Hill, which side would you castle to here? Exactly. We should actually castle long here, despite the fact that we have a bad pawn structure. It's better to go this side. And I mean, if we speak very generally about this position, the reason why we should castle long is simply that, just like in Vashir's game, the previous example, black has two open files to work on if we castle uh, king side. We could, of course, keep the king in the center. We will come back to that. But actually, this is the list of evils, because black would have a move here, which is what most of us would love to play. That's the move d5, right? Uh, threatening to play queen a3. And I think that's what scared them away uh, in the game. That's why they didn't play in this way. So I looked at c5 also. The only problem with c5, yeah, now we're speaking a little about engine analysis. Uh, this is difficult to understand, but it's uh, good for us to understand it. So what the engine is saying here, c5 looks very pr promising now. However, there is a surprising move for black here. Black can actually play here. Um, yeah, maybe I should ask you for this instead. Uh, White is about to play queen a6. Anyone, can you see surprising resource for black here? Okay, king b7 is also possible, yeah. But there is a surprising move for black. If you look very carefully, try to look at the overall activity of black's pieces. You can see that the rook is well placed, the knight is well placed. Um, there is a way in which we can make all our pieces uh, dance, uh, so to speak, in this case. Knight c4 is interesting, but I guess white can take and then take on, on d5, right? This cannot be the right choice. So, yeah, you're right, Amazon. So this is difficult. If you spend time analyzing with the engine, you will have more, how can I say, easiness with this, with this topic, uh, knight xc5. We can actually sack a piece here. Look carefully, please, guys. This is, I think it's interesting. Uh, you would say that nominally uh, white is ahead in material, but it's very hard to defend their position here because we are threatening to take on a3, and if the knight moves away, we can take on g2. And we have this very juicy move, knight c4. It, it will be uh, terrible for white, this move. Very bad news. But yeah, this is surprising to me also. This is very surprising. Uh, it's not my, my variation. No, it's definitely Stockfish who should have the credit for this variation. But I'm just saying, we can learn from, from engines in this way. This, this stuff is difficult for us humans. Uh, relative value of the pieces, and so to speak. So this is what I was saying. All black species are actually active in this position. It's very hard to defend white in this position. Why knight e2? Yeah, I don't know. Knight e2, it's probably possible. Uh, if I do this on my own, I don't think I would take the pawn. Well, I would go for the most primitive move here, I think, knight c4. And I'll take this pawn next turn, I think. Or maybe I can take it straight away. Yeah, this must be difficult for white, this, this position. So if you... Uh, said c5, you are definitely forgiven. This is very natural. But that is a much better move. And the funny thing is that actually queen takes a3, it's not that big threat, queen takes a3. Believe it or not, that's like a ghost, you know? Sometimes us chess players, we are... Um, uh, how do you say? We are uh, haunted by ghosts. Uh, and this is such, such a ghost. So if we're not haunted by ghosts... Uh, if you're afraid of no ghost, what would you play here? You're right, uh, uh, Amazon. You play ghostly queen g4. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Amazon, please go ahead. You can take it from here. What would you play here? Exactly. So we play e takes d5. The main point is that we would love to trade queens. If we take with the other pawn, in that case, uh, black could actually, if I'm not mistaken, black could take on d3 first. And here, if we take back with the knight, for example, Black could actually take on d5, and they can keep this for later. They can have this for later. But if we take with the e pawn instead, yeah, this is much stronger because now, obviously, there is no bishop takes d3. And if queen takes a3, um, who was playing? Amazon. No, please go ahead, Amazon. Exactly, queen b2. And as you can see, white is actually doing fine in this position. They are not uh, being destroyed. Knight b3 is an empty threat. Now we can just move the king somewhere. Black didn't want to trade queens, but I mean, also th this guy is hanging. So they will have to take and they can take back on d5. And I think that's more or less how, how far I quizzed you on this one, right? So you can 
you can play here uh, C takes D5, for example. And I think the engine was saying that black is still better here, but uh, I think it's not so important for us. What we can see here is that white is out of the woods. They can continue in this position. You have some kind of normal endgame. Four against four, we don't have a material disadvantage. Yeah, uh, it's pleasant for black. You're right, uh, Wacky Hill, but wait until you see the game. Aha, you wait until you see the game. So this is a very tough exercise. Yeah, of course, it's, it's very tough. I'm not surprised that White didn't play this way in the game. But I think we can learn something from this. Let's go back from the very beginning. So um, Black is better developed. They are about to do something in the center. Uh, maybe some move like D5 or, or maybe even at some point move away the queen and play E5 is possible as well. Uh, we should secure our king in some way. If we castle long this way, if the, we can afford to let them play d5 however we must have noticed this that pawn takes we can then play queen d2 so we're not so afraid of getting rid of this pawn on, on a3 uh, since we're about to trade queens here on the other hand if you played king yeah king d2 is probably not available due to the uh, fork if we play king d1 black had a funny tactical resource here and i yeah i won't quiz you i'll just ask you to send me in the chat uh, anyone, can you find a, a, a smart tactic for Black here? Exactly, Wacky Hill. You got it. I'll give you the pawn. Please go ahead, Wacky Hill. How is your variation here? Very pretty move, right? This comes up when the opponent's king is placed on the same file as one of our rooks. So, 95 attacking the C4 pawn. White's traditional problem in, the, in this structure. Okay, just to see how this works in practice, please go ahead. Uh, who is playing? Wacky Hill, right? Uh, no, Amazon. Oh, Amazon has the white pawn. Okay. So, please go ahead, Wacky Hill. How do you destroy me here in this position? Exactly. Bishop takes e4. And you can see that, yeah, white is completely doomed here. Okay, I'll try something here. Rook h3, maybe. Uh, yeah, this is not going to work, right? You will probably use this rook in the end, I'm afraid, uh, Wacky Hill. Aha. Oh, queen d7 also. Yeah. If you like, like cheap tactics, you would play. Something like this, I think. Oh, queen d7. Yeah, okay, okay. I don't want to fight with any of you guys. This must be winning also. Uh, to my eye, it's, it's very natural just to trade everything and, and play rook d8. But yeah, maybe your, your way was better. I don't know. This looks very promising as well. So uh, smart move, uh, knight e5. Else, these king maneuvers are not alien in these positions. They happen sometimes in Nimso. Maybe you have seen this plan, king d8, king c7. It's used in some lines in the... Nimso in the bishop g5, and Nimso, I think it's, it's used sometimes. So, all right, that's about the king. Uh, it's a good moment to castle long here. Now let's have a look at what happened in the game. White castled uh, short instead. This was a very bad decision with these two files open. So black, hurry to play here the move queen uh, h7. And white played knight h5. There was some other possibility for white here, but let's stick to the game here. Knight h5, black played rook uh, h8. And after... Uh, what happened, uh, Daniel Best? I'm confused. Uh, some, some chat in the... Some comment in the chat. <coughs> if anything is confusing here, please let me know. And let's see if we can... Uh... Oh, you're not speaking about the position. All right, then I don't care. <laughs> okay, please please continue. G4. Uh, what did Black play here? Anyone? We can switch the board now. Yeah, stay on topic, please. Aha. So, who uh, who can give me Black's next move? Extremely simple, of course. Extremely simple. That's right, Adi Chess. You got it. We will invite uh, Adi Chess to this one. Where is Adi Chess? Um, looking. Yeah. Please go ahead, Adi Chess. Very natural move, of course. Uh, now all the pieces, almost all the pieces are active. We have a concrete threat. Queen takes h5. White played at this moment, king h2. And at this moment, um, those of you are, who are familiar with Fischer's uh, great victory versus Spassky in the 72 match, uh, the Nimso game, you will see this pattern clearly. So black to play and win. If you saw that pattern, uh, from Fisher's game, this should be very easy for you guys. So here we go. One minute only, I think, for this. Oh, congratulations to your I am uh, title, Wacky Hill. Yeah, great work. And you also got it <laughs> very quickly on this one. So maybe you were familiar with uh, 
Uh, Fisher's game, else uh, great work anyway. Okay, Eric, Amazon, you got it also. Something about the overloaded piece, right? Uh, Carlos, you found it as well. Great work. You can check that game later on. Famous Nimso game by Fisher 50 years ago. Wow, time has passed. Um, I looked at that game when I was a kid. I was very impressed by, by the way in which Fisher won that um, Nimso Indian E3 game. The Hubner variation with the blockade on the dark squares, something like that. So I'll write it in the chat, no? If anyone is interested. Spassky, Fisher, 1972, uh, Nimso Indian, Nimso Indian with 4E3. All right. Check that game if you, if you have some time for it. So great work by Wacky Hill, Eric, Amazon, Carlos, Ryan, and MM Thinker. Please go ahead, Eric. What did you notice here? Um, so the queen on e2 is overloaded, so it's defending uh, g4 and c4. So I decided to uh, just take on c4, and he takes. Uh, he can't take back on c4 because as I have takes g4, and I'm winning a piece. I'm going to probably win the other one. Exactly. In the game, let me tell you that they played at this point. Uh, bishop takes f6. Um, there are different moves that you can use here, but uh, I think what he played in the game was very pretty. So give it a try. Thinking about the queen being overloaded, uh, being busy protecting the g4 pawn. What do you think, Eric? Your black could play here. Knight e3. Exactly. And that's what uh, Sadwani played as well. Knight e3. Very, very pretty move. And in this way, after... Yeah, the game went like this. Queen takes. You can find the black's moves here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we just take the pawn, that's right. And uh, no no way they could come back here. Queen h3 and queen h5. Very, very pretty uh, end to this game, right, uh, Eric? You can see the last move also, of course, uh, of this pretty game. Exactly, rook h4 and after rook f3. Of course, black was not in a hurry to take the rook. They took the bishop instead. Exactly, that's how the game finished so um, interesting game yeah thanks uh, Eric great work interesting game uh, very nice attack by black you can see here white definitely got it wrong they castled short when actually castling long was called for uh, basically because black had these two open files to to work on but okay to play this move you have to have the guts for it d5 looked really dangerous but uh, as we saw here uh, who was it maybe wacky hill who said it takes and actually white is okay here nice let's have a look at uh, another opening uh, this was a name Su Indian let's have a look at the French defense I have picked a game from two years ago uh, two Russian grandmasters I think in this game let's see if we can understand it together uh, with the white pieces uh, Zaharsov and playing black Shimano so this started I'm not an expert on the French uh, in general this started as a French Taras, e takes d5, queen takes d5. Uh, very fashionable variation. I, I have seen many interesting games in this in this line. Um, back in my days, everybody would play knight f3, but I think it was Kasparov who started to play d takes e5 here. There is a game, Kasparov Anand, I think, where, where they started to play d takes e5. Yeah, it's something like if you play knight f3 after c takes d4, later on you have to spend the tempo on, on uh, moving the knight and take the pawn or something like that. But if you play in this way instead, you have a swifter development with uh, with white. Anyway, that's not the point here. Let's move on quickly. Knight f6, knight f3. If you and me, we would not know too much about this opening. We would suppose that bishop takes e5 is the best move, but probably it's not. Uh, practice shows that here white can play bishop c4 and put the queen on e2 and later on attack that bishop with knight b3. So actually in the game, they play here queen takes e5. Yeah, this is not an easy variation to understand. I must admit, sometimes... It's funny that sometimes in this other variation, by the way, um, after knight takes f3, I also seen the move queen d7 here, which looks very weird, no? But for some tactical reason, it's good to put the queen there instead of d6. Perhaps the bishop would like to go out and so on. A lot of subtleties in this interesting Taras variation. Anyway, back to our game. d takes e5, knight f6, knight f3. Queen takes e5 then, because black is simply going to put their bishop on e7. Very, very solid variation and not so easy to get an advantage with white. Bishop d3 and knight e7. This is very clever because um, 
if you put the knight on c6 instead, sometimes white can go for something like knight e4, right? Oh, you play this as white, Amazon. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, sometimes this knight, it's nice to have it there. It can protect its fellow knight on f6, and sometimes it can also, also go to c5. So I think this makes a lot of sense to play like Shimanov played in this game. So castles, bishop e7, queen e2, and queen c7. So why did I play queen c7? Well, very smart move, because black would like to play perhaps at some point knight c5. And I mean, like I was saying, I'm not an expert on this uh, variation. Wacky Hill is saying knight e4 or c4. In the game, they played here c4, but this is, let me tell you, it's not so impressive for white, the move c4, although it turned out to be very important in the game. However, I think black is already doing fine here. Uh, we will come to that. Knight e4, says uh, Wacky Hill. Yeah, I think I looked at that also. Uh, you can probably play like that. I guess I'll just castle here, castle short, and then I'll play for Fianchetto or something like that. Um, or, well, there are many subtleties. Maybe I can also take it, right? Because if you take with a queen, I could play maybe knight c5. Yeah, that's probably what I play here. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I have to look into this in more in detail. I think that's the point with black's move order, right? And if you take with the bishop, I can also take your bishop, uh, probably. Oh, Wacky Hill, you want to give check on, on b5. Yeah, if you say so. But don't you think this trade helps black? Trading the, the bad bishop, so to speak? Or? I don't think white has much of an advantage here. And queen g4, says Wacky Hill. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. I guess bishop h6 is coming up. Could I play maybe bishop f6 first? Is that possible? Or is there some drawback to that? I'm just guessing, no? If I don't want to allow them to play bishop h6. And then maybe bishop e3. Aha, to play rook t1 next. So, yeah, maybe. I guess this is uh, p perfectly possible to play with white. I'm not sure there is much of an advantage, but uh, yeah, you can definitely play it for sure. Aha, 3-3 three, three versus 2. Yeah, exactly. Pawn majority. <laughs> but also attacking play on the king side. So maybe, maybe this was a better way to play than, than what they played in the game. Uh, I have in, I think I have in my files that knight b3 is the best move to play bishop g5. But okay, that's a different story. Let's go back to the game. Let's get to the point here. c4 was played and black played a very smart move here. b6. They're now heading for some kind of hedgehog setup. b3, bishop b7, bishop b2. This looks pretty, but actually it's not as good as it seems. Um, it's not easy for white to, to create something really here. Black is extremely solid. And like I was saying, this knight is very smart. It's helping his colleague. So far, so good. Uh, black played at this point the interesting move queen c6. So why on earth did I play queen c6? And why are they not castling uh, at some point? What, what do you think? Why are they waiting? Well, it turns out that this move is very smart in order to limit white's pieces. They can now not use the move knight e5. So white said, okay, Let's continue to simply bring out the pieces. And they played rook ad1. All right. At this point, uh, let's do something different. I'll uh, ask you to write in the chat. Um, I'll give you the question here. Between um, castling long and castling short, uh, which one should be avoided and why? <coughs> for black, no? So we'll flip the board. <coughs> Sorry, we'll flip the board and we will make the chat private for a little while. Okay? I will make it public after that, but I'm waiting for you guys. Don't answer me at this very moment. Think about it a little. I'll, I'll, I'll see if somebody sends the right answer. Between castling short and castling long, one of these two options should be avoided. I would like to know which one should be avoided and why. Okay? I still have the pawn, says Eric. Okay, Eric, I'll revoke the pawn. So, but you have to tell me also the reason. You, else you have a 50-50 chance, right? You have to tell me why should we avoid castling short or why should we avoid castling long? Okay, Wacky Hill, you're definitely uh, close, close to the right uh, solution. And also, Adi Chess, you're very close. Aha, uh -huh, Eric, that makes sense what you're saying. But nobody's really telling me 100% the reason. Um, and let me tell you that the Grandmaster made a mistake in this game. He lost the game at this, at this very moment, I would say. I think Shimanov is 2600, uh, above 2600, strong player. But uh, bad judgment at this point. Yeah, 
Nobody's giving me 100% the, the solution. I'm still waiting. Aha. Um, I see what you mean, uh, Ryan. That's what you're saying is probably what uh, what he was thinking in the game. Tory chest, that makes a lot of sense. If, if you can be a little more concrete. Okay, Eric, you got it. We have our first winner here. Wacky Hill, second winner. Okay, nice. You needed some time. Aha, that's right. You got, you got it. You found a little... Um, uh, secret here, the little secret in the position. So I'm waiting for somebody else because Eric and Waki already talked today. So I'm waiting for somebody else to find it. Okay. Uh, I need like a concrete uh, variation, right? There is a key move which uh, you must find for white in the event of one of these castling moves. So, yeah. Um, the pawn on h7 is in danger. The knight is pinned by the bishop. Well, I guess you're right. Yeah, okay. We have another winner here. Mayo Xiam. That's a difficult handle for me to pronounce. So please go ahead, uh, Mayo. What's... Uh, oh, sorry. I'll give you the white pawn. Black uh, should not cast along, you say. Why? What would white play here, Mayo? Exactly. That's the key move. Any other move? Uh, some people were saying in the chat. I mean, you're correct. Perhaps in, in some sense. You're saying that white will play a3, b4, and c4. But I mean, time is money. Now, I can also attack on the king side, right? It's my turn. I can play something like g5 here. And I will also attack. I have seen games like that, where black can actually play for an attack in this game. I, th I think that was in this opening. There was a very nice game by Italian Grandmaster. Uh, I don't remember his name. But th th a very, very pretty game where he won with black in like 25 moves. Very pretty game. Uh, okay, if I remember it, I'll, I'll let you know. And it was something like this. He just ran, ran with the pawns, he sacked something, and there was something happening on the long diagonal. Um, anyway, so back to Mayo. Mayo said c5. All right, so this is the key move here, which Black must have subestimated in the game. If I take with a knight, uh, Mayo, what would happen? More or less, what would happen? What do you think? The bishop is in the air, so we shouldn't give it away. If you play like that, I guess I can play like that. Don't you think? That will make life easier for me, right? So don't do it. Please uh, include um, in an intermediate move, please, here. Exactly. And then you can play your move, I think. And this must be horrible for black to play. Yeah, B4. I don't think there is a chance for us to, uh, to, to survive with black here, I mean. So that's what, if we take it that way. Taking with the bishop is very silly, of course. Uh, then you can, safe to say, you can play your move and, and it's basically over here. Yeah, and b4. If, if a5, we can always play, I suppose, a3 and we even uh, open up more space. So that's what happened in the game. Um, before we continue with the game, I just wanted, wanted to notice that had you castled the other way around, I mean, short castling. Actually, black is perfectly fine here. White's bishops. They look very menacing, but uh, there, ain't, there isn't much going on here, really, for white. You can't play certainly knight e5 while I'm attacking the pawn on g2. And my next move is simply rook fd8, or maybe rook a d8, if I want to keep the rook here. So I don't know what white... Uh, I looked at some moves here for white. Maybe you would think about this move to try to exploit the d-file, but it, it's not really working. I mean, I can just take and I can go for this endgame, I think. and I don't think... Uh, I don't think white has, has much here. I have the bishop pair after all, so this can't be that bad for black. In the long run, the bishop pair is a huge asset. And if you prepare this, I mean, rookie one or something like that, I think I would just bring the rook to the, to the center. But yeah, black should be at least okay in this position. Looks very pleasant for, for black. So not easy for white to attack here. Yeah, the black is perfectly developed, and this queen is very strong on, on, on c6. So black is not worse, definitely. But uh, yeah, bishop c2 says uh, Wacky Hill. Yeah, maybe. Maybe bishop c2. Some kind of preparatory move. I'll play something like rook d8. And <coughs> you want to play knight e4, maybe? Oh, queen d3. Okay, I see. So I play something like rook e8 and I play knight f8. Next turn. I think I'm fairly safe here. No? Don't think there is much going on in this, in this position for white. Um, Sometimes when I play the hedgehog, I, there is a pawn on e6, e4 and a pawn on d6, and white plays e5. You can end up in this kind of position, but it's usually not very scary for, 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 for black. Oh, queen c3 says Wacky Hill, copying black's plan here. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that might be possible, no? 
I don't know exactly what's what's going on. You want to play knight e4 maybe and mate me or something like that. Maybe bishop f8. Then. Oh, bishop e4. Okay. Yeah, I'll take. You can't play it anymore, right? So, yeah, interesting. Probably this is a game. No, anything can happen here. The strongest player will win and so on. That's what black should play in any case. Now back to the game. Let's see what happened here after black's move. Long castling. Decisive mistake. And uh, we had uh, expl explained already by Mayo that c5 is the key move here. Black took with a pawn on c5, so that at least the c file stays close for a little while. White continued here with a good move, bishop uh, b5, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, anyone, what's uh, White's next move here? Anyone? Oh, I see. Mayo has all the pawns. Okay, I I'll revoke the pawns. Bishop a6 was proposed by Wacky. Cleon says b4. Interesting move also. I think both of these moves are very reasonable. But there is a stronger move. Wacky Hill got it. Yeah. In your second try, you found it. Knight c4. So what's the idea of knight c4, uh, Wacky Hill? Why are you playing like that? Could you explain with... Uh, I mean, I'll play something here. Let's say I just play something like king, king b8. What would be your next move here? Okay, you don't have the pawn. Yeah, please, please wait for me. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, Wacky just said it. Yeah, knight e5. That's the idea of White has in mind here. Suddenly, those bishops, they become like monsters here. Very strong bishop. So, knight c4 is a strong move because we are enabling the move knight fe5. Black uh, went all in here. They played knight g4. Yeah, I think that's the right approach uh, when you're in trouble. Now, try to stir up the game, compl complicate the game. We have an imminent threat of mate. But white simply played here g3. And after knight b6, you can see now with the knight on g4, white cannot win the queen by bishop e5. However, white played wacky small here, knight fe5. So now it's very difficult for black. They can evidently not take. Then their queen is trapped in a funny way. Power to the bishop pair. So in the game, they played instead knight takes c4 and knight takes c4. As you can see by now, the knight on g4 is hanging. What about knight a5, said Wacky Hill. What about knight a5? When would you like to play knight a5, uh, Wacky Hill? After knight b6. Yeah, that should be around here, right? Knight a5. Yeah, it looks very interesting. I see what you mean. You can take, and if I take with the queen, you take my queen. Could I play bishop f6? I was looking a long time for this move. I think I can't, right? You'll take, and you'll play queen e4. But I'm hang this guy is hanging, no? Okay, let's see, let's see. I can... There is only one way to find out. So, don't you think I can survive here, Wacky, if I play bishop f6? Smart move, no? Like some kind of lifeline, no? Uh, if you if you go and take my bishop, I'll take your knight. I'll take your bishop. Knight takes. King takes. What did I miss this time? Wacky, I can give you the pawn if you like. Uh, so that you can move yourself. Okay. What did I miss? Bishop a3. Yeah, I didn't see that one. So, but are you sure you're really winning here? I'll play something like h5. Rook c1, this guy is hanging. Well, I can go, come back maybe. Try to play knight f6. Well, what's going on here? Okay, we're playing blitz now, Waki. Who is smartest in this blitz game? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I can trade queens here and I'm pretending that I'm alive. Or you'll play bishop c6. Yeah, maybe I'm in trouble here. I don't know. Anyone uh, who understands this, what's going on here? Yeah, maybe I'm in trouble. Maybe I can, I can resist. I don't see the mate yet, but uh, I guess it's coming. Knight e5. Okay, so what's going on here? If I give back the piece, uh, are, you so, are you better there if I give back the piece? I don't follow. I think uh, I should be able to make a draw in this split game, right? If you, oh, you just took that instead. Okay, very clever. But uh, I don't know. I'm not convinced. That at least I'm not convinced. <laughs> What's going on here? Some rook c7 coming up. Anyone would like to help me here? Help me out. Rook c8 maybe. Rook c8 should be possible, right? 95, says Daniel. Okay, Daniel, I, I like your move. Sorry, sorry. I'll use Daniel's move instead. Uh, of course, that's a much prettier move. Rook c5. But I mean, I'm, I'm a pawn up and your attack is not exactly convincing, is it? 
So I don't know. Yeah, we can we can continue the blitz game, of course, but I'm not uh, I'm not impressed. I'll play knight e three and I'll push h four and I'll claim that that you're in trouble in this game. You have to play g four, maybe queen e five. Yeah, what did I I guess I, guess I blundered something here, right? Queen rook <laughs> rook c eight check is probably what Wacky has prepared here. So maybe I should play rook d six instead. Queen d six has Amazon. What happened now? Bishop a six. I made it at, at this point. Wow. I really made some bad moves in this game, I think. Yeah, horrible. Sorry, guys. I didn't see this pretty tactic. Yeah, very nice. Uh -huh. Okay, so I declare myself uh, defeated in this game, but I'm pretty sure that Black's position was better. It's just the wrong person playing their pieces here. Um, I think if we compare these two uh, moves, uh, knight a5, let's, let's go back, because I had some more examples I wanted to show you. If you compare these two moves, I'm pretty sure that knight e5 has more to, to, to do with the position, no? because we're, it's, a, it's a more decisive move. We're fighting against the black queen. If you don't believe me, let's have a look at what happened in the game. Uh, knight takes, knight takes. And at this point, like we were saying, the knight is in the air. It can, of course, not move because in that case, the queen is trapped, basically. So <coughs> they played in the game. Yeah, sorry. They played in the game here h all right, um, question for you guys. Between f3 and h3, which move do you think is better and why? What about what queen d6 am I in? Which variation are we? I was thinking not to, not to come back to... You're speaking about uh, our blitz game, but that, that doesn't matter. Let's, uh, let's stick to the game, all right? Between uh, h3 and f3... Um, which one is preferable and why? That's what I would like to ask you at this point. We have these two candidate moves, h3 and f3, with the same idea of kicking away the knights to play bishop e5. Which one do you think is the most uh, promising one? Uh, I, I agree with you, Wacky, and also with uh, Patriots. Yeah, you're right. So, Patriots, uh, which move do you prefer? Exactly. If we play h3, actually black could play this clever move, bishop f6, because it's not that big threat now, because now black is threatening mate also. So it's much uh, smarter to play. Aha, and also like you say, Patriots, if you play f3, somehow you use the queen in the defense. So that's what uh, Zaharsov played in this game. He played f3. And the rest is just, just uh, black has some swindling chances, but it's not enough really. White simply saw through the sacrifice. Um, you can imagine White's. Uh, yeah, we can. I can quiz you on this one, of course, if if you like. But I think there were many ways to win. But I'll I'll quiz you for the nice nicest one. Okay. Uh, yeah, that should be enough. So White to play and win, guys. Time to finish off this game. Well, I got the first move right. I'm afraid the uh, Patriots, uh, I can, I have a perpetual there, no? At least. No? We'll see, we'll see. Okay, Ryan, you got it. That's exactly what the Grandmaster played in the game. So oh, Patriots, yeah. Amazon, and Yugoslavian Berserker, uh, I think you're letting me uh, carry out uh, a perpetual. Maybe. We'll see, we'll see. I, I might be completely wrong on this one, of course. We'll see. Uh, Quacky, you got it also. Uh huh. What else? Yeah, we had some other moves. Oh, you want to take with the king. But in that case, if I give check and that doesn't matter? Well, maybe you can play like that also. Yeah, maybe. Um, all right. Many ways uh, to go here. We have a lot of <laughs> we have a lot of moves here. So we have a little group of uh, students who, who got it right. Ryan, Quacky, Cleon, Roger and Carlos. So, please, uh, Ryan, you were the fastest one. How do you continue here? So, of course, bishop e5, we're trapping the queen. Black had rook takes h2, threatening mate prepared. So, we should certainly not take on c7. We can take on h2 instead. And here, it seems wisest just to take with the bishop so that there is no check on h8. That's exactly how the game went. Black played rook takes d d1. Um, the rest is not difficult uh, for you, uh, Ryan, of course. Bishop f3, last uh, 
trick you could say, but okay, you can win in many, many ways here. Uh, probably Black was expecting, yeah, they were expecting that and then go and take this pawn. But um, there is a better move here for White, a simple tactical shot, which will give you uh, extra material. Exactly, Bishop A6. That's right. Because in this case, um, they are lacking a good move, right? If they move the king, then we take with check, so we save the rook here. Aha, that's right. Um, so back to the quiz situation here. So most people were saying bishop e5. If you take on d8, I guess I can take with the queen. So I'm not, uh, my queen is not trapped anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong. Also, queen d5 is coming up. So you were saying here, bishop, uh, sorry, bishop e5, rook takes h2. Yeah, we should not play bishop takes c7 for sure. That's a bad idea due to this mate. And how was the perpetual, by the way? Um, trying to remember. Oh, there was no, no, there was no perpetual, right? I, I'm, I was mistaken here. Yeah, there is no perpetual. Um, we must take like this. But if they take with the king, then we have rook h8, and <coughs> it got more complex, or it didn't get more complex. Yeah, but I have, I have that check, right? Or that doesn't matter. Now, welcome to the magical world of cheap tactics. We love this stuff, right? We love this stuff like Bishop G5 here. Yeah, yeah, you're good at this. Uh, yeah, Wacky Hill is an expert in this cheap tactics also. Yeah, exactly. Bishop G5 and I, I think Black is making a draw here, right? That's per perhaps the perpetual, but okay, safe to say. It was not the perpetual that I was thinking of. <laughs> okay, everybody understood what's going on here, right? If they take, we have F6 and yeah, Black is at least saving their queen, which should be important for them. So yeah, we should take with a... Uh, with the bishop on h2, like uh, Ryan explained to us. And the game is definitely over, right? Did I miss a mate? Oh, sorry, was that a mate? Uh, let me know. What what did I miss here? You took on... I'm already getting very confused by this game. What was... The, rook takes h2? No, what? Rook takes h2, queen takes h2. Yeah, where was the mate? Uh, that's interesting. Rook check, king... Where was the mate? Here there was a mate? No. No, there was not a mate, right? Yeah, the mate, mate on h1, exactly. Yeah, that's another mate. Here there is no mate. This is just a perpetual. All right. So back to the to the topic. We had this position. It's the opposite to the previous example. This time, casting short was a much safer choice, no matter that white had these two bishops. After all, black has many pieces in the defense also. Like we were discussing, we can sometimes, for example, reroute the knight to defend the king with the black pieces. On the other hand, castling long, it's a pretty idea. We would like to push g5, g4, and attack, and so on. However, uh, this fantastic move, c5, it changes everything. This must have been like a cold shower for black. After that, they are in huge trouble because white, white's attack is so fast here. Um, as you can see, there are ideas like uh, bishop e5 and rook c1 and so on. Pawn takes knight c4. That's how the game went. And Black uh, suffered a lot. No, they played bishop e5 first, right? And then they played knight c4. Yeah, we saw this already. A knight e5 and bishop and so on e5. So that must be avoided. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's move on. Let's see something from the Karokan, all right? Let's see a game in the Karokan also. Um, let's see here if I can bring this up. Here we go. Some of the best female players in the world in this game, with uh, White, Katarina Lachno, and playing Black, Maya Chiburdanice. Uh, Chiburdanice was a world champion for many years, by the way. So we have a Karo Khan here in this game. Uh, Chiburdanice played uh, the, the classical variation. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in Georgia, this is a rather... Um, Popular variation with black. Several Georgian players play this uh, very well. Um, like uh, Jobava, for example. Bishop c4 is definitely not the main line here. Usually we play h4, h6, knight f3, and all that stuff, right? Um, but in this game, Lachno chooses the sideline bishop c4, which is also a little tricky here. Black played e6. Oh, you want a public chat? All right, I'll make it public then. So e6 and knight 1e2. I'm not very impressed by this system with white, to be honest with you. 
I don't think it's as testing as the main line with, with h4. However, it's it's tricky, no? Black played here the move bishop e4. That looks like a silly move, but it's not. The idea is simply to provoke c3 so that white will not be able to castle uh, long, I think. That's the point, I think. Another funny move I have seen here is this one. This is also difficult to explain to anyone. But they have this funny move coming up here so that white cannot, if they play bishop f4, is, did I get it wrong? Yeah, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe you shouldn't listen to me. But there was a move like that in, in some variation. And I thought it was interesting, but I... It's probably like that. Yeah, yeah, bishop d6 first, and then then it was queen h4 or something like that. Uh -huh. Anyway, back to the game. So they played bishop e4, check, bishop d2. White didn't want to uh, weaken their queen side because they want to castle long, probably. Uh, black uh, took back on d2, uh, took on d2, white took back on d2, knight f6, knight f4. So this is mainly the, the idea of this system with white, to put the knight on f4 instead of f3. In that way, they can later on perhaps push h4, h5, and... Black's bishop is feeling a little uh, loose on g6. I mean, if you compare to the main variation here, if you play here, h4, h6, uh, uh, knight f3, knight e7, or, or the other way around also. I mean, here, whenever h5, the bishop can go down, right? Um, on the other hand, here in our game, as you can see, the knight is on f4, so it's a slightly different story. Black must be careful about this plan. So in the game, black played here queen d6, and white castled long. So I would simply like to know at this point, we're playing with the black pieces. I would like to know what you think is black's best move here. All right. Black's best move. Uh, that's what I would like to know. And I will make the chat uh, private again so that we're not copying each other. What should black play here? What do you think is black's best choice? Again, we can say that actually... Black lost the game at this very moment. Okay, Wacky Hill and Patriots, I agree with you. That's probably the best move here. I agree with you. Completely. We have to make a choice here at this point. Aha, most, yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a she, it's not a he, Wacky Hill. But anyway, yeah, they play that move. Aha, so, nice. Okay, Little Grandmaster, please go ahead. Uh, what would you play here with the black pieces, Little Grandmaster? That's right. In her comments, Lachno, she recommends this move. Black should get castled long in this position. So uh, if uh, white plays something like h4, we were talking about this situation. It's slightly uncomfortable. What do you think, uh, little grandmaster? What should we do about this bishop? Can you see any plan for this bishop? Is there any way to like save it? Avoid it. Uh, exactly, Wacky Hill. That's right. We can try to bring it. Yeah, don't do that, please. Don't do that. Uh, you end up with a horrible weakness. I guess I can almost take it at this point, right? And I have a rookie one coming up. Don't do that, please. Um, but we can recycle, we can reroute it to d5, like Waki is saying. So bishop e4 should be one possible move. Uh, maybe we can also play knight e4. So if knight takes, bishop takes. Yeah, this bishop has many lives. It can come over here. And as you can see, if white tries somehow to trap it, you can always play a move like, I, I think you can play a move like b5 and you're still alive. Unless you can take the pawn, but okay, that's a different story. In any case, yeah, maybe you can heal. Maybe you can actually take the pawn. So that was what Black should have played. Thanks, little grandmaster. That's completely right. 97, preparing long castling. However, uh, what Chiburdanisa played here was short castling. Okay, very basic, you will say. She's just castling into it. But look carefully, please, guys. What do you think White should continue here? And I'll quiz you on this one because I want to see if you actually understand this. Let's see if we understand this together. So you have one minute to... Let me know how to continue here. You got it wrong, Wacky Hill. I'm very sorry for you. Uh, Patriots also. Okay, Amazon. That's the smartest way to play. Excellent. Uh, most people got it wrong because you didn't check the alternatives, right? You, did, you didn't check the other options. We have two winners so far, Amazon and Cleon. That's right. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'll show you another case, uh, a related case. I'll show you something similar to this once we're done with this example. Aha. It's important to see how white can attack the black king in a good way. This is not obvious. You have to think about it. Sometimes the most natural move is not the best move, uh, right? You need, we need some time to compare one option and another option, which one is the most promising one. Like in the first example we saw today, the Vashir game. You remember the, the first example today? Uh, okay, we'll, I'll explain what I mean. Tori Chess, you got it also. Great work, little grandmaster. Um, so, 
look at this. Uh, look at these guys. Let's see if, if we can understand each other. Let's see if I uh, get back to the first example today. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can if I can bring it up. Um, which was our first example today? Uh, oh, I, I can't. Uh, oh, I, I can't find it actually. I can't find it. It was the game by. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. But we looked at the first example, right? Vashir Castle Short, and we said H4 is bad due to G4. So we said we should start with G4 and then H4. I hope you remember it. So, uh, Cleon, please go ahead uh, and show us how should white continue here. Exactly. We should take on G6, which is con contra counterintuitive at first sight, right? Everybody will say, okay, just play H4 and hit the bishop and so on. But in this case, Actually, white can uh, black can save themselves by this same move, right? Bishop e4 and bring the bishop to d5. Black is probably okay in this position. Bishop d3 and I'll play b5, I think. Black is probably okay. So look at the move h4. It's not so useful anymore. We don't have a hook on the king side, no? h5, h6, black will play g6. So it's a natural move, but it's probably wrong here because we, black has this resource. So I think Chiburdanitsa, she forgot about this move, knight takes g6. That's my... Suspicion. Pawn takes, and please go ahead, uh, Kleong. What should white play here? Yeah, very obvious. Now we have a hook, right? Now we can open up the H file, and we have a very strong attack. That's exactly how the game went. If 97, we can just continue, and it's going to be a very difficult game for black. You can see that even if some pieces were exchanged, there are several pieces still left uh, to attack black. In the game, Chiburdanis instead played B5. And something interesting happened here. We are used to seeing attacking games ending with mate, right? But that doesn't always uh, happen. So in this game, actually, uh, bishop e2 was played. Uh, Lachno also notices that if white plays instead h5, this did not work because there was this funny uh, tactic. Anyone, what do you think black would play here? Funny tactic? Yeah, for you guys, this must be very easy. So black's best move here, what do you think? Uh, preventing white's uh, queen transfer. Exactly, Cleon, you're right. C3 and we're distracting white's queen. Smart move, right? Smart move because if queen takes, well, then the queen is sidetracked from its circuit. And if pawn takes, of course, this will give black some attacking chances also. So yeah, like no, didn't fall into this, of course. She just played here, civilized move, bishop e2. And at this point, black uh, played knight e5. They found like a way out, like they bailed out here. They found the way to trade queens. However, they ended up in a difficult endgame. That's how the game went, actually. Pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop f3. And white had a much better game here, brought, brought the knight, the rook, and so on. And they went to win, went on to win many weaknesses in black's camp. So not all attacks end with mate, right? In this case, white won in the middle game instead of in the end game. However, let's go back to our position. So we had... This position, yeah, end game. That pawn stack of sucks in the end game, exactly. So I think simply Black forgot about the fact that White could take first and then play h4. They simply thought that, like most of you guys thought also, that they would play h4. But then Black had this smart move, bishop e4, and they're still kind of into the game. So much better choice would have been knight e7. Yeah, oh, sorry, Ryan. Yeah, you were speaking about the move f3. All right, so when do you want to play f3? Oh, here f3. Uh, I think at some uh, occasions, uh, Ryan, I can play bishop f5 and I can let you double my pawns like that. So if, if you play like that, well, anyone, uh, what do you think? b5 maybe? It's maybe my turn to attack now. Uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, I guess this is what black would play here. And the f, if at some point uh, white plays like that, I'll play bishop f5 and you can take and I'll take back and I can live with that. What does Amazon say? It should be the first move calculated, right? Checks, capsules, and attack. Right. But I think it's the pattern, Amazon. I think it's the pattern. Very often, black is happy that uh, white takes on g6, but not when they have just castled, which is this case. So it's a deceiving topic, no? In many other situations, um, if white would take here, oh, thanks, black would say here. Fantastic. I got the h file for free. Any Caro Cam player would be very happy about this. But the bad moment to do this is when we have castle, like like in this game. No, it, this is the bad moment. And here white took and they played h4. So bad judgment by black. Unfortunately, in this game, they should have played knight e7. Um, 
Okay, Ryan, we can talk about this uh, variation. Yeah, you're saying that when I play bishop f5, I will play knight e2. Yeah, we can probably come back to this, Ryan, uh, at some other occasion. But I mean, I know what I would play here. I'll play b5 and I can give you the pawn, of course. Please go ahead. You can have the right pawn. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So, what would you play? a3 here or a4? Or what? a4. So, I guess I should open up the game, no? Because I'm trying to to attack you. Yeah, could I bring in the knight maybe? Knight d7 perhaps, come here and then play a4 or something like that. Um, not so clear, is it? Yeah, okay, I'll I'll just play quickly here. <sighs> yeah, so if I push a4, you'll play bishop a2. So I, I have this move in the pocket, then, but then you're burying your bishop, no? If I play a3 here, is this bad judgment maybe by me? Okay, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe it's bad just, judgment, but I'm saying that whenever white plays h5, I'll play bishop a5. This bishop is not working anymore. So, I mean, I could play something like e5 here, no? Let me know if I'm missing something, Ryan, but I mean, I'm also having some ideas of my own here, some attacking ideas. So I think your plan is is too... Yeah, no problem. I think it's too slow. It's slightly too slow, no? And the bishop is not so happy anymore. So I think Black's uh, play should not be underestimated in these Karakan positions. I'm pretty sure the right way to go was what uh, Katarina Lachno played in the game. Knight takes, pawn takes, and h4. This should be avoided. So let me tell you about the other case. Um, there was a case in the game between Wesley So and Sam Shankland. So something very similar came up. This, for sure, I'm not an expert at all. I guess you guys are familiar with this variation. It's very um, fashionable. Uh, queen b3, queen c7. So I think what they have noticed here is that uh, black should not play knight c7 too quickly. It's better to keep the knight there. And there are also some plans like take on c4 and play b5 and a6 and c5. I think that's like the, the, the currently the, the right way to go. But okay. Uh, Wesley Saw took very quickly on d5, so it, now it looks more like some kind of exchange slab. However, white will castle long because they know that they can take on g6 whenever, right? Black played a6, um, starting some action on the queen side, knight takes. So here you had a similar uh, situation in, in this game. Rook c1, bishop d7, bishop d3, rook c8, and Wesley Saw played here the move knight e2. So... Anyway, what do you think black should play in this position? Perhaps you know about this stuff already. What would you play with black here? Which move comes to mind for black at this point? A5, says Amazon. Yeah, interesting move. Maybe you can play A5. I don't know if I can put my bishop there. Maybe it's slightly annoying for you. But uh, yeah, B5 or Queen B6, says Wacky Hill. Exactly. B5, I think, was the strongest move here. And you tried to bring a knight to C4 and you have counterplay and so on. B5, says Tori Chess. Yeah, I agree. In the game, however, Shankland castled short instead. And I don't think I have to ask you twice about White's next move, right? Aha, so they played... Uh, okay, I'm waiting for somebody. Daniel Best, you're right, and Eric, that's what they played, h4. Okay, but it's not as crushing as in the previous example. But that's basically what, what happened here. They played h5, and Shankland played g5, and I think that what Wesley saw played was something like king a1 and bishop b1 and, and queen d3. So... Black was in trouble here, but uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly what happened later on in the game, but uh, white got the upper hand and black was suffering. So I think it's slightly related, no? So when you have these double pawns, careful that they can open up the h-file. Um, of course, it, it also depends on black's chances if they have a strong attack coming up. But since white hasn't moved any of these pawns, there are no hooks and so on. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say in this position, probably. Black should not castle, even if we're supposed to castle and there is an open file and so on, we should connect the rooks. But it seems that in this case, it's actually better just to get going with, with attack ourselves. And in likewise, in, uh, in our main game here, Black should just continue development. Maybe they can also go for an attack without castling. Um, but if you castle, do it on the queen side, please, not on the king side, because if you castle king side, well, we have this bad news waiting for us, h4, and yeah, big trouble for us. Here we don't have g5 like in Shankland's game, right? Because the queen is the queen is there and so on. All right. Uh, three knights uh, variation after uh, knight uh, c3 here. Let's see if I can find this one. 
if knight c3, knight f6, bishop e5, maybe some of you play this variation. There is a move bishop d6, which looks weird, but Bragg's idea is to castle or play rook e8 and only then liberate the bishop. Here there is a variation like this. You play the move a3 so that you secure the bishop, and then um, you put the bishop there, and here you can guess why it's best move. Since the bishop is not there, there is no reason to play rook g1. Here you can actually play. This was played in a game by David Howell. He played simply. Yeah, what do you think, guys? Would you play rook g1 or could you play it in a more in a faster way, maybe? Exactly. We can just play g4 straight away. That's what David Howell played in his game. If, yeah, this year, 2022. Howell played g4 and after if knight takes rook g1, you can see for yourself this is crushing. No, this is crushing because the bishop is so badly placed. So, uh, yeah, using hooks. Yeah, maybe you're right, Amazon. That's what we're speaking about. There is always a pawn on h6 or h3 and so on. So, back to our uh, main game. Here we are again, Ryan Lopez with the d3. Very interesting system to limit the volume of uh, variations that you have to study. Knight e5, please remember this pattern. The knight is coming there. h6 was played. It's correct to prevent bishop g5. However, black should not have castled here. This was a good moment to play bishop e6, for example, or the prophylactic move rook b8. By now we understand it, no? Because if bishop d5, then we can just play knight e7. But in this game, as in many others, they actually castled here. And we had the explanation here by guinea pig. Knight takes, queen takes, bishop d5, tying them up, bishop d7, and rook d1. Please notice that this move is very important to play. If you play instead h3, I looked at this also, black is able to untangle here with knight e7, and the attack, I mean, this is what will happen later on in the game. Um, it's not so strong. Black is okay in this position. We're like missing one tempo. Imagine that the rook was on g1. At this point, the queen would be in the air. So that's why rook g1 is so strong here. Believe me, this is the first choice of the ending. So it's no surprise that people play like that. Some people even give away the exchange here. They play knight e7 and they let white take the exchange. But even then, white has some attacking chances. In this game, black played instead the move h5. All right. Anyone, what do you think white played here? Not difficult. Just stick to the idea. Of course, Amazon, we just play h3. And like in Vachier's game, also the h5 might be open up for us. Black played at this point, rook a e8. It's very difficult to come up with a good uh, um, solution for them. Uh, g4 is coming no matter what black plays. So rook a e8 is very logical because now we can finally use our knight. But you will see that uh, this is going to be difficult. Okay, I'll quiz you for the next moves. Yeah, I'm talking too much and you're not moving. So. I'll quiz you for the forthcoming moves here. The move number four is important, okay? Uh, all right, guys, let's see if you can find it. I'm sorry, Yugoslavia Berserker and Patriots. I'll play Queen G6 and hoping that I can sidetrack you there somehow. Um, good question, good question. I'm not sure, Patriots and Eric. Maybe that works. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that works also. Okay, maybe you can get half a point for that then. I'm wondering if I could avoid taking on g4 after that. Okay, those of you who said bishop g5 at this point, I'll play queen g6. And if you play g4, I will play knight e7. I don't know if that makes any difference. Uh, yeah, hard to tell. We will come back to that. So most people want to play like that. And uh, we have some people who want to play g5. I understand. Yeah, yeah, that's very logical also. Okay, difficult to find this with so little time on the clock, of course. It's natural that, um, that you can't find the whole sequence, of course. And I think what you play, most of you here, Guinea Pig, Adi Chess, Amazon, Keong, Jake, and Tori Chess, that also makes a lot of sense. So that's, that's probably okay also. Yeah. Wacky Hill, you were closest. Yeah, you were closest. The fourth move was very important, Wacky Hill. Uh, the fourth move was very important. Think about those bishops. Uh, which is the most uh, important bishop there? What do you think? All right. So uh, we should... Okay, Kwoki, you were, you were closest. You were closest. Nice. Great work, Kwoki. Let's listen to Kwoki here. Please go ahead. So the first moves are very obvious. No, G4, we want to open up the game. I think the difference here is that between G4 and bishop G5 is that if black doesn't take on G4... We have some more flexibility. We can play a move like knight h4, for example. While if you play bishop g5 straight away, maybe I can play something like knight e7 here. I don't know if that makes sense, but I mean, now you cannot play knight h4. You're, this guy is hang, hanging and so on. 
So I, I believe more in what Kwoki said and what I played in the game, G4. So please go ahead, Kwoki. Please continue. All right. So at this point, Black played knight e7, trying to swap off that bishop, but bishop g5. And here is the key move which Kwoki found. Nobody else found it. It's very important to trade off that uh, knight because we want to keep this bishop. If we retreat the bishop instead, we will give them some chances of counterplay. I think you can play something like maybe bishop e6 and you can fight uh, back on this diagonal. So they played bishop takes e7, and after rook takes e7, Kwoki said knight h4. But there is a pawn move here, uh, Kwoki. There's a pawn move. Imagine which pawn move could be used here. Exactly, Amazin. So this is very, very pretty. I still have some difficulties understanding it, but it's very, very strong because white, what they will do now, they will attack on the H file and the G file. Um, and this bishop stays on the board, which is very important. Black can trade it off. That's what happened in the game uh, very soon. But still, white has strong attack coming up. So G G5, Queen H5 was played in the game. Exactly. King D2 or King E2. That's coming up here. White actually played here the move King E2. Very strong move because uh, we are now ready to bring in the other rook to the battle. It's better to play King E2 than to play um, Queen E2. Queen E2 lo also looks natural, but then Black can play Bishop G4. And they have some counterplay. However, after King E2, Bishop G4. That's how the game went. Anyone, what do you think White would play here? I will quiz you just for the next two moves, okay? Try to find the next two moves in this brilliant game by White. I'm not familiar with the player who you, but this was really a nice game. Congratulations, Wacky Hill on Amazon. You found it. Uh, Tori Chess, that's a natural move also. You can slap Work Circle or Patriots. That's natural too, just that there is a more forcing continuation, as you will see. Remember, in attacking positions, we can sometimes give away material and we can uh, speed up our attack. That's exactly what happened in this game. Look at that bishop on d5. What a fantastic bishop, no? What a fantastic bishop. That's the hero, probably, together with the G-Pong. These are the two heroes of this attack. So, congratulations to Guinea Pig, Arichess, Eric, Hockey, MM Thinker, Jake, Amazing, Hockey Hill. Uh, you all got it right. Also, Kyong, Mayo, uh, a lot of people got it right. So, Jake, please. Yeah, you're right, Tori. That's the right move. Please go ahead, uh, Jake. What did you play here? This bishop is annoying. We don't want to spend time on defending, so we just sack it. Exactly. And now all the pieces are dancing here. Our next move is very important. Please go ahead, uh, Jake. That's right. In this way, we get ready to play rook g1 and g6. Fantastic domination by white in this game. Now we understand why the king should be on e2. We didn't spend time on castling and so on. It should be on e2. It even protects the pawn on f2 so that black cannot take it, thus preventing rook g1. So the game is basically over here. Black did the best they could. King d2 was probably also working, but then I guess I could maybe take on f2, right? And I'm preventing rook g1. Anyway, black played here, g6, uh, rook g1, and queen h5. That's the best thing they could do in order to try to trade queens. We could look at the move like queen g2, but maybe black can then bring the queen to g7. White found a much smarter way to continue here. Please remember what I told you about. We can sometimes, in attacking positions, we can go for an endgame. Exactly, Amazon. Please go ahead, Amazon. You can take it from here. Let's uh, see how you continue here. Exactly. This bishop will be a giant in the end game also. Uh, exactly. We take with the pawn. Now we have rook uh, g8 ideas coming up. Uh, they didn't... Play. Exactly. You see all the moves here. Great work, Amazon. Of course, we don't play like this because maybe they can take back and suddenly they are okay in this end game, right? So, of course, knight h4. Fantastic light square domination in this game. I think it's not so famous this game, but I really like it. Rook e takes f7. Black finally gives back material. You can continue. Amazon, this is not so difficult. Um, yeah, we pick up the exchange. We give check and we pick up the pawn also. In the end, white only got an extra pawn. But of course, with this knight, nice knight, that's enough. White later on went on to win this game. Fantastic knight. So, yeah, I like this game. I must say it's, uh, it's brilliant in my opinion. But there were other games in this variation. So probably they picked up something from other games. So... Final uh, final look at this position. Castling looked very natural, but by now we know that whenever playing h6, there might be hook on the g file in such positions. So this was a bad mistake. What white played here was to take and play bishop d5 in order to limit black species. And then we had a key move here, rook g1 going for g4, g5. It was surprisingly difficult for black to defend in this position. So uh, great game by Huyu. 
uh, with the white pieces versus uh, Mullion playing black. So please remember this situation, guys. Not always it's correct to castle. We have to think a lot about that castling decision. So I guess that's uh, it for today. Thanks a lot. Uh, we have one more uh, class, I think, about castling into it. We will look at some situations next time where it's actually okay to castle into it. Yeah, that's what we look at, the opposite side of the coin. So thanks, uh, Chess Dojo, Chessable, uh, Chessable, and so on. Um, so USCS, thanks, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, -bye. bye. Yeah, bye-bye. See you. <laughs>